Hey, Bootcakes, it's your favorite girl, April Watson. Is my mic on because I do not hear myself? Let's make sure these mics are on. <laughs> check, check. The mics are on. All right. That's the beauty of a live experience. Hey, Bootcakes, my name is April Watts. Welcome to Ego. That's everybody's got one. It's the podcast about opinions. Right now, let me give you the number to call in because tonight's topic is going to be hot, hot, hot. And I want you to wait in. We want to hear from everybody, people with standards, people without standards, single, married, complicated, all of that good stuff, all right? The number to call is 410-822-3733. That's 410-822-3733. Also, be sure to share this podcast, like, and subscribe. Now, we're going to kick things off with our feature, The Human Being of the Week. This week, our HBOW is a double dose. Two world-class athletes faced off for the fifth time in their careers. One is undeniably the greatest of all time. The other is on a meteoric rise that cannot be denied in a sport where the gatekeepers have long tried to deny us. Watching them play each other is a reminder of just how much our representation matters in everything. Because regardless of the final score, their very presence together on the tennis court is so much bigger than sports. Naomi Osaka and Serena Williams, you are the Ego Podcast Human Beings of the Week. And of course, congratulations on the win, Naomi. Now, before we get started on the episode, I do want to give my love and my prayers and my thoughts out to Tiger Woods and his family. He was in a terrible car accident and he's currently in surgery. So please, prayers up for Tiger. Now, getting on to today's topic. Are your standards too damn high? We're all out here living, loving, dating, all that good stuff. Some of us have figured it out. Some of us are still figuring it out. And some of us are just a hot ass mess, right? <laughs> so joining me today, we have Wes Felton. We have my girl, Sherelle Alicia. And via Zoom, I like to say via satellite to make us sound like the big boys. <laughs> we have my girl, Kiki Shrugs, and we have Andre Nunley. How's everybody doing? I'm doing well. I'm amazing. Thank you for having me. Great, thank great, you. great, great. Well, first and foremost, thank you all for being here. And I like to speak for myself, so I like to let others speak for themselves. For my egomaniacs, who are the podcast watchers and supporters, can you just give us a brief introduction of yourself? Who are you and what you're all about? Well, ladies first. <laughs> oh, look at that gentleman. <laughs> thank you. So kind. Um, I'm Shiro Alicia. I am a um, internationally published hairstylist from Baltimore, Maryland. Ooh, ooh. I'm also a mindfulness mentor. I have found the um, specialty of merging mental health and beauty together to enhance the overall woman. So that's what I'm Love all it. about. And um, I'm happy to be here. April. Happy to have you. <laughs> uh, Kiki. Oh, um, hey, that's right. <laughs> I am a lady. Um, so my name is Kiki Shrugs. I live in Frederick, Maryland. Um, I'm an accountant by trade, uh, not necessarily by passion, but I'm working on that. Um, keep happy to be here. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm Wes. Sorry, brother. On uh, via, uh, no, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I figured I'd give you a second. Man. I know you had to give some love to the kids early. I heard, you know. Uh, Absolutely. My name, is, uh, Absolutely. my name is Wes Felton. Um, my government name is W. Ellington Felton. Um, I am a uh, professional uh, interdisciplinary artist. Um, so I'm, a, I'm an actual trained actor and recording artist as well as a visual artist and um, a father. Right. Um, and uh, <laughs> yeah, and a Libra. And a Libra. <laughs> so I'm, a, so I'm very much that. addicted to love. <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least, Andre. Um, my name is Andre Nunley. I am a uh, family nurse practitioner. Um, I'm in Jacksonville. I'm originally from D.C. Um, I have two beautiful babies, six and three, little boy and little girl. Uh, married for 15 years. Um, I love what I do. Uh, the mental health piece, I really love. Uh, my passion is music and writing. And, you know, I still live vicariously and basically I just write like bedtime songs now. So, yeah. <laughs> Aww. Alrighty, so let's get into this topic. Are you too damn picky? And of course, if we're talking about being picky and trying to figure out who we're going to date and who we're going to love and all that great stuff, we have to talk about standards. And I like to have a working definition because a lot of times we're talking, but we have different definitions and things get lost sure. in translation. So how would you define standards? Hmm. How would you define that? 
I would honestly define standards as class in my world. Um, having a certain level of class or uh, I wouldn't say value. I think that's kind of um, off, but I would define it as, you know, things that I look for in a person that would make them a, a decent person. Okay. Um, I wouldn't say it's about like finances overall and things like that, but more about character. Mm -hmm. So um, that would be my definition. Anybody else want to take a crack at it? For me, it's implicit bias that we all have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we all are very implicitly biased, whether we want to admit it or not. Um, the only, apparently the only implicit bias in the last 10 years that has decreased has been uh, towards sexual orientation. Okay. Um, but in terms of women's right, in terms of a place of women in society, in terms of people of color, um, and uh, class. Class. Mm -hmm. those, Definitely class. Those, those are, but they said the one that has not changed in 25 years is weight. <laughs> weight is mm -hmm. Yeah, right. That's true. So when you when you when, with all those things that I just gave an example of, depending on the individual, a lot of those things often are in the top three uh, criteria of how they choose a mate. Mm. So mm. you're talking about visually. Some people say, "Well, I don't want no heavy person. I don't want nobody that's out of shape." Right. Mm -hmm. And they could be just as much out of shape. Right. And they still have this implicit bias. <laughs> you know. What, you understand what I'm saying? I do. So when you're talking about standards. Uh, for me, standards are those implicit biases that we either unconsciously or consciously choose to guide us beyond the perception of ourselves in this world. Mm. All right. Anybody on Zoom want to jump in there? For me, standards would be a list, right? A list of wants and don't wants <laughs> okay. based on experience. Mm -hmm. So as you grow older, your list either... You either add things to your list or you remove things from your list. So okay. for me, it's like a moving list. Okay. Mm, it's I a like living that. situation. A living it's a list. working, yeah. ever yeah, evolving it's, situation. It's, All right. It's written in pencil. <laughs> Andre, you want to jump in there? Absolutely. Um, for me, standards, it's almost like the bare minimum of what you are willing to accept. You know, I mean, at the very least, you got to be able to walk in the door with something of your own mm -hmm. meaning and not even so much anything you know that's going to be financial or tangible but there has to be something at your core that mm -hmm. immediately draws me to there needs to be something at your core because that core value is what mm -hmm. can allow us to work through anything and if you can't I agree. yeah for, so for me if you don't have that basic kind of kind of just just that minimum of meeting no nah, i can't no nah. <laughs> all right once again we are talking standards in dating and love and romance and we're trying to determine, are you too damn picky? If you would like to join in on this conversation, give us a call at 410-822-3733. You can also leave your comments on, on Facebook or on YouTube underneath the actual show. And we will do our very best to get to you. But the best way to get to us is to call us directly at 410-822-3733. So now that we've defined standards, what's your most important standard when dating? Wait. <laughs> you so petty. I, I'm just honest. Yeah. Are you I have to be honest. I live in reality. I'm a reality based yeah. human being. I okay. Don't, I don't base things on uh, fantasy. I don't base it on something I saw in a movie. I don't base. I base it on reality. And first off, I'm not a heavy set person. <laughs> so when I think of, and again, like I told you guys, our biases are not really based on what we're seeing. It's based on how we see ourselves. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you got to remember, the only way we know how we are is based is only in a mirror, okay, or by someone else's how they See interpret us. us. Okay, so we're really never really getting a true. We really never really see ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We can get to know ourselves and and, and work on ourselves, but I, I, because of the size that I am, I don't. I just personally think, you know, <clears throat> one, I don't think big girls are checking for me. You understand? Because I think I. <laughs> Because I think for them, I'm just, I'm just be honest. I've never had no big girls hit on me. Opposites attract, though. Nah, they Sometimes don't. Sometimes big girls like yeah, you, small men. Nah, it's very just true. Yeah, well, well, it's like you have well, small men well, who all, love big well, women. Well, yeah. all I'm saying is that I, me personally, I, 
I I have maybe I ain't gone to enough big girl parties or something. I don't know. <laughs> I cannot. I've you never... know? Oh, hold up, hold up. Because I... Wes, you could be missing out on your person just because of weight. And at the end of the day, for real, yes, listen yes. to me. You can lose the weight. He, he now you can't change person. somebody's no, heart, and you can't change somebody's personality, and you can't change somebody's spirit. I'm not saying that's the make or break. The question was, what's your most important standard? What's your most important standard? What's your most important standard? Because see, when you when you start there, then you peel back, then you begin to peel the layers off. Mm. I'm a, I'm a I, I'm a very uh, public professional. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that mm -hmm. means that. There are people uh, uh, constantly uh, creating perceptions of me based on what they what, see. whatever venue or avenue that they choose to lock in on, right? Mm -hmm. So what that means, that means that the individual who I end up, the woman whoever I'm a partner, I'm partners with, they, they're going to catch shrapnel from that on so many levels, right? And if they're not an individual who really is kind of like, locked in confident. and strong and mm -hmm. confident it's going to be a problem regardless of their size right mm -hmm. so i'm just i'm just honest enough with myself and honest enough about society to say that i've never i've yet to have a big woman or a, lar a, a larger size woman one try to holler at me or two like really pursue me okay hypothetically speaking you find the love of your life mm-hmm and she's not a big woman. She's small. Mm -hmm. You guys have babies. She mm -hmm. develops thyroid disease or, or something happens mm -hmm. to where she's no longer small. Right. She's big. Right. And there's still society. There's still your perception. Right. But this small woman that you fell in love with is well, now a big different. woman. I don't want a small woman either because I don't feel like I have. Well, this. Because well, the other as a thing, woman, I, the perfect I want, size I want, I want, I, No, no. I want a woman who does not come with any of the uh, social constructs or any of the baggage or the, 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 the baggage that's been called tradition or the baggage that's been taught to them. At, and really, it's just stuff that's been doctrinated on them. It's not even really what they believe. It's not really been practiced and tried. They just bring it along with them. And that can be any size woman, right? right. But I am at least honest enough <laughs> to admit like that no women. no that no that that we as a society see the way the way the way we're talking way, about you no, listen no listen we're talking this, about you no no but when we're but when, when you're an individual in a society the overall current of the society whether you're aware of it or not actually dictates where you go that's why i said the first example of bias the first bias that most people the one that's rapidly changing it's not because people who are anti-gay are no longer anti-gay. It's because society, as a majority, has it has accepted it. So they now, so you have to just kind of come along with it. The same way when you vote for somebody and the guy you voted for didn't get elected, eventually you get you eventually fall. You what get that brought into do the with women? Yes, it has so to deal with big it, women. Yes, so what they It has to deal with in my industry. Big women are chastised, whether they Lizzo or famous. Or they unfamous, they're scrutinized, and I'm just saying for me as a man and the type of women that I'm attracted to, I, I don't I would prefer to not put certain women in positions mm. or in places that are gonna add to my stress or add to my anxiety just for me just because of what I do for a living. Or That's what we were looking for. Right, you, social yeah, media. right. It's, you know, and uh, yeah, but I'm also like also you could be small, and if you if you have a if you have bad skin, I'm not checking for you. But that's not if you're your a woman who doesn't one, have her nails. Uh, uh, see, we didn't go down the list. <laughs> this, uh, our sister Kiki told us that standards are a list, mm -hmm. right? And it's not only just a list, but it's an ever changing list based on. But we're your talking about the. I've kicked it with a. And you prefer size not to because and you, you not feel to. that certain things come no, along I, with that I feel experience. That, I feel that I don't match them. That's all I'm saying. That's not what you said, though. I did say that. I said I'm not a big person. <laughs> it's growing and ever changing, just like he needs. <laughs> All right, Sherelle. Um, honestly, what is your most important thing? My most important is character, mm -hmm. integrity. Like I don't have a physical type. Um, that's why I don't really get all wrapped up in the beginning. I have to spend time with you to kind of get an idea of the inner workings of you, and that is what will 
have me see you physically, and then I'll get to going down my list. But first, the the enters they have to line up for me to even open up and be vulnerable. That's my number one. All righty. Yeah. We going to Zoom. We're having a conversation, so you guys can just jump in whenever you want. <laughs> no, for for me, it would be spirit. I'm I'm at a point in my life right now where. To me, it's important. It is mm-hmm. important that you have a relationship with God for me now, right? There was a time when it was all about looks. But as I grow older, I realize that my spirit with yours is more is the most important piece for me right now. Mm-hmm. It's funny because as I listen to Wes... I mean, for me, if we're going to have just an honest conversation, it's okay to say what you're attracted to and what you're not attracted to. Mm-hmm. It's completely fine to say it, right? And for me, it doesn't matter if it, quite frankly, we're honest. If it offends you, then you realize that it's just not for you and it's okay if I'm not attracted mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. you personally. That's mm-hmm. okay, right? So again, if I'm 5'11", and when I was younger, I was really intimidated by taller women, but mm-hmm. I still seem to attract women that are like 6'2", 6'3", mm-hmm. Right? But I started to realize that there was something about me that obviously a woman who was 6'2", 6'3", found attractive. So mm-hmm. that kind of opened me up to the possibility of yeah. that. So, again, it's hard to say what's, what's good for Wes or, you know, but again, bro, you don't need to dance. You just say, look, and I'm that's not attracted I, and that's, to big women. I, I thank you. That's I mean, it. But I feel like I was bit, I feel like I was getting like, you know, <laughs> putting like a double headlock. But it's not true. Because 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 it's not true. Like, I've, I've been intimate and had relationships with like WNBA players, right? And mm-hmm. we're talking about 6'3", we're talking whatever. And some people, that's considered a big girl, right? In some people's world. That's a tall girl. Think, but that's also, they're girl. not just tall, but they're athletic. They have, they, they got butts and breasts mm-hmm. under those things. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you weren't talking those, about that. So, so, no, no, but I'm just giving you that. I'm saying it's based on the individual's implicit bias. This is not the And thing. how they define <laughs> what they define that as. People have a right to Lizzo's their standards. Lizzo's too big for me. Lizzo's too big for me. And that's me. totally fine, so right? I would never check for, I totally never check for Lizzo. Totally fine. Right? People have every right to their standards. People's standards do not have to be explained. But if you're talking about being honest, then you have to be honest and say, yeah. you don't like big women because you don't like big women. Stand in it. You just gave us just this whole in intellectual, so artistic okay. thing where it's I'm just okay. like, hey, you don't like stand big women, it. yo. Like, you don't like big women, you don't. I, I'm, I've, 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 and that's okay. I, I and been, that's okay. I haven't been blessed. Uh, with the privilege with the, and honor. With the presence of Let's us. Let's just say and, you don't like that's big that's girls. That's that right there. And, and, that's and, that But if, so, if, if one graced you with their presence, would you be open to it? Well, then we got to go to the next no, standard. Wait, the, the question no, no, no. is, no, no. would you be open to it? Y'all ain't asked me what my second standard is. We, we, we ain't get there yet. yet. It's her voice. I was about to tell y'all my second standard. We have not gotten to Andre's main standard. My second standard is the woman's voice. Andre, what is the number one standard? So I agree. Number one standard has to be integrity. And generally, the way that I know a woman's integrity, my biggest thing is I watch how you treat other people. Ooh, yes, the reality is yes. you may just like or dislike me, but, but I just feel like people don't really pay attention to how people treat other people. Yeah. Because eventually, mm. you just may like me, but if you treat other people just in a really horrible way, eventually it's going to work its way to me. Yeah. Right? Yep. I just may be on the good side of it for the most part. So for me, looking at the integrity... Looking yes. at the way that you treat other people means everything to me, mm-hmm. you know, because if you treat other people badly, I don't even want to be in your space. I'm listen, with you on listen. that one. I'm, yeah. I'm so with him that's, on that one. I bad. actually had an experience Ooh. like that where the guy, he treated me amazing, but how he spoke to other women, it was mm-hmm. honestly, it was other women. It was like he had no respect Like for if them. he calls other women bitches yes. and stuff. Like, and you, I, you probably call me a bitch when if you're not around point, me. If not exactly. now. And he said to me, well, what difference does it make if I treat you well? It makes and a I, big difference. But, and for me, for what I do for a living, mm-hmm. like I am that person for women. So for me to be with someone who... We are not on the same page. It's like, it doesn't work. This like, is one of my main tests. When I go out to eat with a love interest and they mistreat people in positions of service, yeah, that's I yeah. will like hard stop 
I will leave you all the way alone yeah. for mistreating wait staff or, or we're out somewhere and we catch an Uber and you talk to the Uber driver like trash just because he's in a service, but he or she is in a service mm -hmm. position, like stuff like that. It's a no-no. I am judging. Just a quick question. Is everyone on this panel besides me, uh, you guys experts in like astral projection or something? Um, I, like, do you, I, you, I don't want to say it. The reason why I'm asking is because... <laughs> I'm, I'm hearing, I, I hear all of that. Because everything you guys are saying is used, are, are, are like my deal breakers. Everything right. you guys are yeah. saying okay. are the deal breakers. For mm -hmm. me. The standard for me is what gets me to even give that person a chance That's fair. to present to me the deal breaker. That's fair. So my question is, <laughs> unless you're somehow able to astrally project outside of yourself, Go and have an experience and get to get, get all this deep stuff that y'all talking but about. But it's not that deep. No, no, listen. That's the thing. There, has to be, there has to be something first yeah, that initially yeah, right. makes you have a desire okay. to open up to that person, uh, act a certain way to have that person trust you to open up to you. For you to figure out all that stuff that's talking about. And so that doesn't like, make it a standard. That means, that means but it doesn't so make it a standard. I think, I think the issue, as far as like you having an understanding of what we're saying, is that, like for me, I don't have a, a package that I'm looking for. The package right. Right. comes through the experience. Exactly. So me hanging out with you, going on dates with you, you know, that doesn't, it doesn't really mean anything. So where do you guys meet these random people at? Like I mean, for me, for me, most of the people <laughs> I've ever ended up in relationships with, we had to at least look at each other across the room or someone had to introduce I see what us to each other. Physical attraction, so right? had to, you, you understand? So it's 20 and 21. I have like, women slide into my DMs constantly. Yeah. And I, I, don't have, I don't respond to them. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? I go into a restaurant. I look at the whole menu. I love everything that they got on there. But I don't sit there and say, I want everything they got on here. Mm -hmm. You understand? So but, I'm, so but I'm, I'm pinning that for, for one second because we do have a call. We have to go to the phone. Now, don't oh, lose Lord, her. Here we go. <laughs> you something right. else, y'all. <laughs> Here we go. Hello, caller. Hello, April. How are you? I am fantastic. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. Great show. <laughs> I um, I'm, I'm glad you're having this show because it, it's very important today. And one of the reasons it's important is because it's something that affects not just men, men, but also women, and not just women, but also men, but. The difference between standard and expectation, I think, is a question that needs to be asked. That's important. You know, when I was growing up as a kid, my standards were established through my core values based on what my parents taught me or my teacher taught me, mm -hmm. my grandparents That's taught true. me, the adults around me taught me were good things. Now with the advent of social media and reality TV, it's become expectation. Mm -hmm. It's no longer integrity and honesty and loyalty being the standard. Now it's the flyest car or the biggest carrot or the best lace front or, you know what I mean, or getting that bag. Their expectations is what people expect people to be good to them or give to them. It's not how people treat each other. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think the difference today is people expect things as opposed to knowing what their standard is. And I think that's a huge difference. I think that's an awesome point. Thank you so much for that call. What do you guys think about what he had to say? About I, the difference honestly, between standards versus expectations. Of course, there's a, a difference. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a no-brainer. But I'm a firm believer of, like, you deciding your world and deciding your deposits. Although I understand his perspective, that's not the world that I live in. Okay. So I can't really relate to that. Mm -hmm. Um. I naturally allow people to show up how they show up and meet me, mm -hmm. and I go through the human experience with them, and if it's not to my liking, then I excuse myself. If it is, then we discuss our expectations, our lists, our negotiables, our non-negotiables. Exactly. We become more vulnerable with each other. That's my world. So... I understand other people have different influences. Like, even with my social media, I curate my social media. Mm -hmm. There's no love and hip-hop. I have plants. I have, like, luxury vacations. You have a very and peaceful, have, a very yeah, good like I don't social really media. Have, I love your social media. Thank you. So I don't have those deposits on the daily, and I don't, I don't feel the need to compare myself or to show mm -hmm. up a particular way. 
So for me, it, it's it's not like that for me. Okay, which leads me to I, the I next. Do, Go ahead. I do see. Uh, so going back, and I'm sitting here thinking about what Wes said, right? As far as unless you guys can like foresee how a person is, in, you know, internally, right? Yes, the first thing I think is your standards of physical, like you how like the energy between the two people, right? That's how you get your foot in the door, right? Right. And then from there forward, though, I mean, I get it. Wes is like, yeah, that's what I was saying. That's, that's yeah, but it's it. not like that. <laughs> <But just laughs> and saying, I do online. And my radio second radio standard shit, is her so. voice. And if her voice is annoying, she's disqualified. <laughs> and because I'm not going to want to get to know her and listen <laughs> but to see, her. But see, a lot of this, but a lot of this, but that's your process. It doesn't. That's your process. It doesn't. Nobody said that. That's your preference. Okay, that's all I want to make You're entitled to Nobody said that. All right. Everybody's part of the So you're a big girl with a sexy voice. Holler. Oh, <laughs> DM. Lies, okay. liar. <laughs> Go ahead, Kiki. That? Finish okay. what you were saying. <laughs> Into the DMs. <laughs> right. You know. Finish right. what you were saying, hey, Kiki. Hey, bro, why you why why you had to go like that though, right? I see that. I... He's sending them to your DMs. <laughs> nah, he he I, I never mind. I'm not even gonna <laughs> be a jokester. We're in the Were well, you finished, Kiki? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's basically so. Yes, I I do have to agree with Wes in that respect because obviously the physical aspect is going to be important to most people. Attraction is you don't important. just like, like yeah. it is. It is actually very important because you have to have some type of attraction. Now, let's keep in mind though that you can be attracted to somebody's energy and exactly. not just their physical sure. appearance. Exactly. So. So you can be, you, you can definitely, and, and I'm, I, I'm telling you, like some of the, there are, there are some people that I have never met, but just their energy. I can feel it even through, even just a post. Yeah. Like I don't know all my social media friends, but I see what they post and I can, I, I can connect with some vibe with them and I have never seen them in person. Mm -hmm. Right. So, exactly. you know, it, it, it is important, the physical aspect, but it's more so how you feel around their energy. Exactly. Exactly. Now, I, I kind of want to go back to the, the, the standards and the expectations thing. With standards, do you communicate your standards to people or do you play the whole silent and just observe type of game? Mm. I, I go I, I think go they hard. should. I let them go first before I open All right. my mouth. Anybody on Zoom? Yeah, I mean, so I'll say, I mean, for me... I feel like standards are mine, right? Yes. I feel like standards and expectations are very similar in the sense that the thing that I've realized over time, um, whether it's me actually becoming stronger in my relationship with my wife, because I have certain personality traits where I have a tendency to kind of step back and that's kind of who I am. I generally want everybody else to be good. I'm kind of, you know, a natural caregiver. That's what I do for a living. So I kind of gravitate into that space. But over time, what I realized is my disappointment has been fundamentally connected to expectations of mine that other people didn't meet. Mm. So when I really line that up, like me putting my standard on you or me putting my expectation on you, that's not your responsibility. Exactly. To mm -hmm. meet that. That's true. Right? You know, but if I'm honest and say, look, my standard is you treat people well. Right. Mm -hmm. And I know that everything basically can pretty much flow from there. Because I know if you fundamentally treat people well, we can work through pretty much anything because I know we're going to find a way to be able to communicate because you care about people. Right. And if you care about me more than the average person on the street and I know you treat them well, there's really nothing you won't do for me. So for that's me, I really great. can't put my standard on somebody else because that's mine. Yeah. Right. The same right. as if somebody says, hey, listen, I need Andre to be six foot one. Good luck. Right. I can't help. <laughs> Good <him>. luck. <laughs> Kiki. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. I absolutely agree with that. I mean, it, it's like your feelings, right? Like you can't make people responsible for your feelings. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, my feelings are mine. Yes. They're legitimate because they're mine. Mm -hmm. You know, like you can't be yeah. worried about other people's feelings because they're theirs, right? Same goes with your standards. I, I agree 100%. Like, you know, my standards are mine also. So patience sometimes are assumptions. Um, we assume we were talking about this before we went on air. We sometimes expect people to know where we coming from when we say a certain thing or understands what somebody else means when who we may have had a longer relationship with. And so there might be a 
closer or a different mm -hmm. type of intimacy mm -hmm. that you and that significant other don't have, right? And so when you, when you, you know, we, we have a tendency to assume that people understand and know how to handle those scenarios. Uh, I tell my homeboys all the time because I ask them, I say, yo, you, you know, they, a, a lot of them are married and then a lot of them are single. A lot of them are divorced that are single. And a lot of them that are married are really frustrated or they got they got they got issues or they got things that then makes me as a single man be saying, oh, thank God, I'm, I'm you know, not married. But then I got homeboys that single that I hear some of the scenarios and stuff mm -hmm. that they're going through where I'd be like, oh, God, I need to go find me a wife. And I'll right. go on Facebook and I'll start mm -hmm. thirst trapping, talking about, oh, Lord, please send me. Uh, my significant other, <laughs> being small, tiny, tall, whatever, please, Lord, right? Because mm -hmm. I start, I, I, I'll start, you know, allowing others' uh, experiences or other people's bad. So, so what I've learned to yeah. do now is when I when I come to, when I deal with a woman and we're talking about expectations or all of that stuff or those words, whatever you want to use it, I've been I've come to the realization where I've come to women. I say, I don't expect you to be my everything. And I'm not, I don't want to be your everything. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Because mm -hmm. that's a lot of pressure to put on a person. Mm -hmm. Because in society and yeah. in life, we have enough stress, we have enough issues. And sometimes I look at people when they're dating, people that they, they go on trips together, they, you know, they move in together, they, they buy, you know, they get joint bank accounts or they, they, they invest in expensive things. They do all these, they even might even have kids. And then... By the time you get married, what's what the is there to deal? do? What is there to do? What is there to do? Mm -hmm. Where I remember we would, used to have a period of time where there, I think they used to call it courting. That's courting. exactly right? what it is. That's what the old where, folks call where, it, where, courting. Where, where you, had to, you had to at least get in the house before we go to Hawaii. There's a process. Dude, let alone, let's get back to let alone courting. Let's do back that. To, let alone us just going on, going, we, we went out to eat together mm -hmm. and now all of a sudden mm -hmm. we can go to another country. Now all of that is gone. But that's the part that's, that's different for me. And people have yeah. expect, but I'm saying, but now in just normal relationships and things like that, people, those are expectations. Well, I when think that's so. Are, those, those and, 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 and that's why the brother who called in Although you may not be able to relate in terms of your immediate world, you have societal expectations, and then you have individual his, his I'm not saying, expectations. I said I understand his perspective. About his yeah. I've, I've been the guy that a woman has chosen an abuser over because he had a better car. I've been the guy yes. that a chick... That's a self-worth issue. No, 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 but I've been That's the guy... That's a self-worth issue. Right. But, but, but then I've also yeah. been the guy who's been too short. I mean, I think I, 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 like, I understand you, 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 what so, you're so, saying, but so, I think so, the issue is when you don't communicate those things. And 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 so which is for why me, I, the question. I, I, I come from a long term. To. I was in a, a long term relationship. I've been single for a little while now. Mm -hmm. So dating for me, the process is different. And I'm more mindful. I'm more mature. I'm more aware of myself. Mm -hmm. So I go in honest. Right. Mm -hmm. So that whole human experience part that I'm talking about, like that's the part where I do share my expectations. Right. I do share my standards because that's a clear opportunity for you to let me know if you're OK with them, yep. if you to can me? meet them, if you cannot. Mm -hmm. That's your opportunity for you to be honest about that. So for me, although I have standards. It's not your responsibility if you don't want to. Right. But if you want to be with me, I think it's important for you to understand that this is what I desire. And oh. this is what I'm looking for long term. So if we're on the same page and there's synergy between those two, then we can move forward. For me, there is a clear difference between standards and expectations. They're, they're very closely connected. But to me, standards are directly related to my core values yeah ground level and yeah, i don't right. communicate my standards because i need to see who a person is naturally mm -hmm. and and i need that person not to fake meet my standards mm -hmm. but to actually be those things you know mm -hmm. now now once but we I, get mm -hmm. past you meeting my standards then it it's my responsibility to, to communicate my expectations of, of how those standards manifest in our relationship. So when you speak of standards, mm -hmm. do you speak of like 
physical standards or things in relation to you? Because I have I physical feel like standards, it's a, but they are not physical as in a physical type. No, when I say physical, I don't mean like physical body. I mm -hmm. mean like things in your hand or like is it character? Is, is it, it yeah? Tangible. Is it like characteristics? Is it like a way you want to be treated? Is it um, like my my most important standards are not material standards. Okay. However, stability is a standard for me. I think, the man yeah. does not have to be rich. He does not have to be a multimillionaire. But he, he does to not have stable. to shower me with lavish He should things, be able to take care of himself. But he should be able to take care of himself and me mm -hmm. should something happen. Exactly. That is my standard. I now, agree. I am not walking around looking for a handout, but should something happen to where I am unable to take care of myself, you should be able I to need ahead. him to be willing and able mm -hmm. to take care of me temporarily. Mm -hmm. What if long term? But I would assume and if it's long term, term then that's fine too. But okay. I assume that, like, you, why would you even be in a relationship with someone or give a person your that much time of day if you don't already know know that about them? If it you takes don't time. Know, to it takes time. Don't to, don't like, you got to know people. You gotta, I don't that, mean people asking them about that their that financial out. status. You, that stuff has to be put no. out. You gotta find you don't that stuff. I don't want to know that. I think that comes in time. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I, go ahead. What did he say? See, so for me, that comes in time. There's something that's yeah. funny. Um, actually, so for me, before I moved to Jacksonville, I lived in Baltimore um, and I actually used to go to, I'm trying to think, Tony Smith's church off of York Road. And when I first met my wife, he said something to me that I didn't have a complete understanding of then, but I learned years later. Right. I'd met her and everything was on fire and everything was really passionate and just we connected on all these levels. And he said, make sure that you see her in every season of her life. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. And the thing for me, I took that as being very young. This was 18 years ago. I was mentally I just wasn't mature in that space. I, <laughs> I took that as literally winter, spring, summer, fall. <laughs> but the thing is, having Amen. that Up, really down. immature, <laughs> you know, but having that really immature space, I didn't really understand it. And unfortunately, I had moved to Jacksonville. So when I really understood it and learned it on myself, it was truly seeing every person in every space that they exist. Exactly. Right. So the problem yes. is, there's no way that I can truly know authentically who you are until that scenario comes up. That's yes. why in those vows it says, yep. for richer, for poor, for better, for worse. Yes. Most of the time, we don't see each other at that space yep. when we stand at the altar. Most of us have never seen the other person at their lowest because nine times out of 10, you haven't committed to them. So you're probably not going to deal with their lowest if you haven't committed to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, it's, so it's this really difficult process of yep. going through that. You know, So that's kind of where I am when it comes to just, excuse me, just the way we process through kind of embracing each other and being able to see who you are as a person. Yep. You got to be able to just ride with somebody, you yeah. know, and to your point, you got to be able to see them, who they are authentically. Mm -hmm. yep. Because I can't tell you, you know, because Wes said off camera earlier, there are some guys who actually know how to become whoever it is they that you need them to be. They do. Yes. But to be fair, but to be fair, there are women who do the exact, exact thing. thing. Yep. I, That's I agree. agree. A, people are people. Right? People yeah. are people. Yeah. Listen. So there's, you know, yeah, uh, absolutely. I'm yeah. sorry, go ahead, Kiki. No, no, no. I, I, you, know, you know how I said the whole thing with, uh, you know, for me, something that's important to me is the spirit, right? Like spiritual piece mm -hmm. of it, because yeah. I feel like if you, if you have yeah, like a relationship, like you, you're, the, the person's going to be kind, like, I'm hoping that that's what, you know, like talk about like the, 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 the fruit of the spirit, right? Yeah. Kind, you know, mm -hmm. all that stuff, right? Honest, whatever. Okay. I have been in a position where I fell for the wrong person because when I went to like they did the praying over the food, the Bible open and <laughs> on whatever it. like on the table, like they set it up. This person set it up so that I would actually believe that there was some type of genuine like desire to 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 be that per you know to be everything that I, that and and come to find out no it was all it was all a lie. It was all for you. It was, mm -hmm. <laughs> huh? It was all for you, Kiki. <laughs> It was just a show. It was. Absolutely. It was like, Dick, was I felt so, I felt so deceived. Like, you, you're playing. Like, <laughs> this is what you decided to do. Like, you could have just you left know, me alone did, to begin with. I heard over 400 mm -hmm. years there were some guys on a boat who did the exact same thing. 
to a population of people in the same way. They put a Bible on a table and they laid out food. <laughs> you so just glad. too. I'm sorry. <laughs> so crazy. I, I, I'm saying I was but hearing that story and it just but it's not, manipulation it's, is manipulation. I get it. I, for some reason, I just was, you know. Yeah, but but to to piggy to go off back to what he was saying about finances, mm -hmm. like there are. Men and women, let me make sure I do that for the men, right? right? <laughs> Who Thank you. they do, Thank you. they paint a picture like they have their lives all together, and it's not. Yeah. And then sometimes they may even have the money, but they don't have like financial literacy, or, exactly, or vision, or some sort of idea as mm -hmm. to what they want to build. Well, so, I, I'm, I'm an artist, so money, I don't that's that's never anything in my my drive. Mm, you're person. creative, so and that's I, fine. I, when I mentioned that, I was just kind of elaborating on the guy who. Called in. Oh no, I get, yeah, I know, but yeah. I think it was a statement made about like, how do you know finances if you don't right. have that conversation? But yeah. you'll know long term, like how, over time. Yeah, over time. I mean, but you figure it out if every t if if eight out of ten of times you go out, it's clear who might be like. I mean, I I, I just I think know, that I'm they're red flags. I'm a fan of a process. I think they're I'm red. I just think that they're red flags that we pick and choose to ignore in order to ride it out and in order to oh, kind of do that. That's all I'm saying. There are some good actresses and actors out there. They're yeah. out there just praying. Yeah. And the thing is, so. like, there there are some things that you can talk about and put on the table up front. But for real, like, even even if the person isn't lying to you. How people perceive themselves is very often different yep. than how other people perceive them. So we can talk till yes. the cows come home, but the mm -hmm. process of dating and courting is when you really get to know a person. person. And so yeah. as, as, as far as my standards, I would much rather just date you, just be in your presence, just be in, in different situations with you and see how everything plays Pain out. Up, and and yeah. then once I feel like you meet my standards and we can do this, then we both talk about expectations because I, I, I don't just expect my expectations to be met. I want to meet yours too. And we like, it's, it's almost like a little business negotiation. No, like, it is we, a business we are saying, negotiation. <laughs> this is what I need and this is what I am willing to give. And sometimes even the person who meets your standards cannot meet your, or cannot or does not want, want to, to meet your yeah. expectations. And at that moment, it's fine, and you go about your merry way. No, for sure. Yeah. I, I go hard though. Like the last couple of women that I dated, <laughs> I, I went so hard. Like I, I, I would like have like our first date be like a funeral, what? Or, like a wedding. No, seriously, I, I would, what? I would really. No, 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 because Bruh. no, no, no. Listen, because my, because it goes back to what I was saying. If we now live in a society where courting incorporates traveling, things that used to be reserved for the wife, right? I think that if that is the case, that's no better. It's no better way to really find out if a person can handle anything than it putting it in the fire. But a first date? Dropping, I'm not saying a first date, but I mean in like, not literally the first date, but I mean in like, Early on. Um, yeah, like the first week we started really. See, and I'm the one where I'm like, like that's oh, a little no, bit too much to do today. Or, 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 <laughs> or we go to another country and see, because because that's the other thing. When you actually travel with somebody, when you actually stay in a hotel room, you're with stuck somebody, with them. You can't escape. You find and you out, see how they live. And you find and out like really that. how they live yeah. and how they function. And then at that point, you as the individual make the choice and decision, and you say, you know what? All right, I noticed that. <laughs> I, I noticed this that her, thing here. I noticed that she got like some chocolate nerds on her thong that she left. With. Oh so my god! No. So <laughs> but, but 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 she's a good person. She's she has the same standards as me. She's genuine. I love but the way that, I love the way she treats but other people. Are non I love the way that she treats the other other people. I'm talking about all these qualities, all these expectations, all these standards, all these things you guys just named, right? Is it us and against a person you or you ignore. against us? No, no, no. no. <laughs> well, for, for, well, first of all, I'm a Libra, so I, I, I'm always going to challenge. I'm going to always choose a perspective to represent that. that that's oh, I see. Okay. Okay. So that's that's I'm that's, following that's, now. That's my natural. He's instinct. just balancing the scale. I see. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's, my, that's my natural instinct. Okay. Right? But I'm just saying <laughs> that's that's. I'm just giving you an example. So am I wrong to just say you know what? Damn this. 
This girl, she everything. She everything everybody on Ego Podcast told me I need. I need. She a big girl. But it's not about she's what not we're about telling you, she you not, need. It's no, about no, what your I'm standards you are. I, I'm not, I know it's not about what y'all are saying. But I'm just saying, in that moment, do you, do you jump ship? So or do you how, it out? how do because, you because know what's to say if, when if you to go abandon your standards? Got, that's not how she keeps her house. So I'm so not abandoning. I'm not abandoning my standards. Possibly, well, well, I'm I'm saying that in the sense of Kiki talking about how over time her standards evolved because of she course. evolved as a person yeah. and and she realized what is working, what is not working. Like maybe. At the age of 25, you, you have a certain standard and it's not working out for you. And you look around and you're like, I'm 45. I'm still lonely. I still whatever. Like, maybe I need to tweak something. So at, at what point do you realize that possibly your standards may be the problem? I think that's a weird question because it could be it could go either way. It could be, of course, you need to change something. Mm -hmm. Right. But it, or it could also be that you're uncomfortable and you want to settle. Like, I don't think that, I think that's a weird question because of course you'll only find the answer internally, Uh huh. but um, you have to be mindful. Are you pitying yourself or are you self-aware? Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of like a weird place to be. Mm -hmm. Like for me, I know there are definitely things that are important to me, but all the things that are important to me now weren't important to me before. Exactly. So they're important to me before because I played myself the first time. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they're important to me now because I played myself before, right? Mm -hmm. So I've added things to my list, but I'm also comfortable being by myself. Yes. And I know that there is, for all of us, an a possibility that we won't be with yeah. someone. And that's fine, too. And that's mm -hmm. okay okay for some of yes, us. Yes, for mm -hmm. some people. And that's the, the weird part of that question because it's okay for me, but for someone else it might not be okay. And that's when they start checking, taking those things off the list. And that's when I think that that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's just me. So, I, I, so I feel when like a do lot of you know people that you take it off the list? Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. I feel like a lot of people end up compromising, like you, you're compromising their standards out of fear of being lonely mm -hmm. or ending up by themselves. And I think that it's something that's very important that I, I is it Shrell? Yeah. <laughs> that is, first of all, you got to be comfortable being by yourself. Yep. You do you have to be comfortable loving yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to be, you have to love yourself enough to say, you know what? If I end up in a situation where I don't feel valued or I don't feel like I'm, I'm being loved to the best, type of love that I can receive, then that is when, that's when you ask, how do you know when to jump ship? When the idea of staying is more painful than the idea of leaving. Yeah. yeah. That's when you really got to go. That's when you have to be like, wait, wait a minute. Right. Mm -hmm. This can't be life. Can I stay like this for 20, 30? My, my, my family, we live a long time. Okay. <laughs> we don't die until, we don't die until we're like 85, 90. <laughs> so, I have a long way to go. Like that's freaking damn near Listen. 50 more years. So right. Like, right. Are you serious? <laughs> so am I going, am I going to put myself in a situation where I'm going to be miserable? Right. Am I going to know that? No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say, I mean, it's me. The interesting thing about that is normally the deal breaker. Wes said something. You generally ignore things very early on. Mm -hmm. You think about it. The deal breaker is a deal breaker. It was the deal breaker in the beginning. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. You just yeah. keep moving with it. The deal breaker never changes. Mm -hmm. But for right. whatever reason, mm -hmm. we accept it. Right. Yeah. We move on. And for example, like I said, if I'm a caregiver by nature, one thing that I also learned about myself is I'm a rescuer. Yeah. So unfortunately, what I also learned was I also need outside validation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's me being really, really honest. Right. So one thing that we talked about was being self-aware. Mm -hmm. So the thing that I know that I need to do more than anything else is when I see a thing, I can never unsee. Mm -hmm. So if I'm honest about myself, it's really hard for me to judge anybody else, right? Because I know there are certain tenants I was raised with, treat others, treat others as you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. 
Judge not lest you be judged. And if I'm moved yeah. by those two pieces, I'm good in life. Mm -hmm. And I found that to be consistently the case in my life. Yeah. But I absolutely know that my job, the great thing is now I get validation from my work. Mm -hmm. And now I don't need to put that burden onto my wife to now mm -hmm. make me That's feel right. better about me. Because right. oftentimes what I was drawn to when I was younger, and again, ladies, I love you, but if we're completely honest here, <laughs> emotionally dependent women, because I am a person who emotes, Mm. So I'm a person who gives support to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So guess mm. what? Quietly, like a dog whistle, I never knew why I get these women who are emotionally dependent. And mm. I'm like, man, I feel good about myself. This is wonderful. I'm helping her live a better life. And all of a sudden, I'm like, man, this is some bullshit. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. You're, <laughs> draining. You're draining you. You want to be the hero. I yeah. never, yeah. But I That's never knew why yeah. until all of a sudden. I basically had that epiphany, but it wasn't like I had that epiphany by myself. This was sitting down with a counselor and, right. she, and she literally took up the mirror Working and she held it. up the mirror and said, okay, what do you see? And that's so why the therapy is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's Absolutely. why therapy is a very Absolutely. beautiful thing. Th therapy is good, but the work you still got to do the work. You got to do the work. Yeah. You got to do the work <laughs> yourself, right. definitely. And, 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 and that's why when we have these expectations or we have these standards, if you're not at least willing to, I guess, you know, attempt to really trial and error them. Exactly. Like, so so I, I get that, but I just, I'm just not for the whole drawing out, wasting a person's time because society tells us or because we believe that over a course of time, you really get to know someone better. You get, I just think that that's something that we used to, you know, take less accountability. So I if think it does, word so it, so if it does go left, we can at least kind of try to say, well, I was in love. That's why I ignored it. Or well, I think I, by it's, the like time the, it's almost like the cliche, the devil made me do it. It's the deal breakers. It's like flip it's up. Okay. You know yeah. what I'm Guys, but that also takes that a so lot sometimes. of... Deal breakers are, are deal breakers. I'm telling y'all, deal breakers happen at the jump. I'm telling you. Yeah, but see, time. when I say yeah. but when I say time and, and, and go we, through the we... experience with someone, that doesn't mean it takes it doesn't a mean year. Breakers, yeah, and you know? it doesn't mean that it takes longer than two days. Like it's just time. the word time is it's the process. You know what I'm saying? It's so, the process. Yeah, I think that it also takes discipline mm -hmm. to be able to say like, no, this is not for me. Like mm -hmm. I'm definitely not the one. Like communication is a non-negotiable for mm -hmm. me. I'm not going to yeah. walk you through it. I'm yep. not going to tell you how to do it. You can either do it or you can't. Yeah. The second I feel like you lack communication, yep. I'm mm -hmm. done. If you call and say, I don't really like how you move and it doesn't work for me and that's it for me. That, it took me a, some time to get to the point where I'm like that because I'm like you. Yeah, I'm like wasting time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can waste my money, but you can't waste my time. Yeah. Right. I can't get that back. Yeah. So I'm going to cut it short, but it doesn't mean it's going to take me... Oh, well, let me talk to you. Two years, you know? Yeah, right, like, right. no. The second oh my God, way yes. you fail, I saw it, and I'm good. Like, exactly. It's, it's not And I, I, I need to get the answer to this question because I believe in honesty and honest answers. So I'm going to ask the question again, but in a <laughs> different way. Okay. Has there ever been a time where you got rid of a personal standard? I'm not speaking theoretically. I'm not speaking societally. I'm speaking for every individual on this panel tonight. Has there ever been a time when you got rid of a standard? And if so, why did you abandon that standard? All right, yes. I mean, oh, absolutely. Oh, good. Somebody want to go first? Look. Go ahead, Andre. <laughs> Come on, Dre. <laughs> absolutely. So I'll make it really, really simple. The standard that I basically set to the side was me loving me more than I loved you. Mm. Oof. And the reality is I've set that to the side because, like I said, knowing who I was as a younger man, without the confidence, I would walk in the space of powerful women in the sense that I used to work up against the wall in retail. And there were women who were established in their career. They were in school and college. They were working at law firms and they would approach me, but I didn't see where I fit into their existence. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. They saw something in me that I hadn't seen in myself yet. Nice. Right. So one of the challenges of that was... I would get into a relationship and essentially I would give myself over. So Kiki mentioned something about compromise. Compromise ultimately means I'm getting something back. Oftentimes mm -hmm. we accommodate. Mm -hmm. We give everything That's up the difference. Yeah. for, for yeah. the happiness of somebody else. Mm -hmm. So for me, the time when I set that standard to the side, I literally put what was best for you fundamentally ahead of, ahead me, of me, bar none. 
And that's that time for me, I did it. And it was primarily because I thought that it would give me the love, the affirmation, the validation, the connection. I, I literally thought it would give me all the things that I needed, but I realized that that was a hole that I needed to fill from the inside out mm. instead of trying to put stuff into it. And that's, so for me, that was it. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? You were going to say something. Nah, I'm going to wait. That's no, I'm going to wait. Come on, Mama. Come on, Mama. Thing. You got to tell the truth. Come I on. I relate to what you just said as a, as a, as mean, a, as a man. I think I can relate to that, too. Because you definitely, I can yeah. definitely say as a man, uh, often our concept of compromise or kind of, you know, putting aside a standard often relates to our um, aggressiveness or our machismo. Or, mm -hmm. And so what will happen is we'll kind of, in our minds, we'll think, oh, this is how I'm going to show her that I'm respectful and I'm considerate. So I'm going to tone myself down. I'm going to try. I'm going to. And what you start, like he said, you start realizing, like, you're, you start literally stripping apart in yeah. pieces of yourself. Yeah. And then if it don't work out, then you got to be like a doctor. Put in yourself his, back in together. In this case, he got more You have to rebuild but you yourself. Gotta figure out how to yeah. put your you emotions to back in properly and then stick yeah. yourself up properly and then have the faith. And the emotions and feelings to try to do it again. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So right. It starts, oh. but it starts from a very, very early age. If you guys think about it, what phrase, Wes, have you heard? And what phrase, ladies, have you said or heard at some point in your life? If mama ain't happy, nobody's happy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Happy wife, right? happy life. It, like the mop. Exactly, <laughs> right? Right? But the challenge with that is it infers that it is my fundamental job yep. as your man and your Sounds husband like you to right ensure there. that you're yep. happy. Right. Where's your responsibility for you being happy? We and then, quite frankly, where, where do I fit into that equation? Where does Wes fit into that equation? Because mm -hmm. there's nothing that tells you you need to basically slide into that space, especially not in today's society, right? Because, mm -hmm. quite frankly, you guys are powerful. You guys can do all things, mm -hmm. right? And, and the idea that a man or anybody would suggest that you guys take a role that is more of a partnership, right? Or you might say subservient or any of those other things, the same as that way that Wes danced about the whole big girl, tall girl thing, <laughs> most men will not even say what my expectations are for you if it sounds like it could be remotely sexist. Yep. Yeah. Right? But most women have no problem saying, I want you to protect me. Mm -hmm. I want you to make sure you take care of the house. I want you to take out the trash. I want you to fix this. All of those things, there's no hesitation. But if a man says, you know what? I want you to clean the house. Mm. I want you to have my dinner ready. I want you to clean these clothes. Man, you better run. Nah, but is I that what you're trying to say? It, though. I wouldn't be offended. Is that what you say is how you say it? Like, listen to me. I am Latin. I'm Colombian. I was raised for this wife-mother thing. I was <laughs> raised to cook, to clean to love on you, to basically worship the ground you walk on because mm -hmm. that's Where you live at, Latin Kiki? Men. Are you single? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I see your nails. I see your nails. So you are, cultural, I see Kiki. your nails. So you're already hitting on my number three stand. You got, <laughs> you got your nails <laughs> looking good. We're about to make a love connection. You got a here. nice. Your voice is good. And so <laughs> come on, let, let, let's 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 make it sing. happen. And you're not you big. Heard me sing though. You didn't right. <laughs> you didn't hear me sing though. Oh, well, that's all right. I'm, I'm, I'm the singer, so I'll sing to you. <laughs> hey now. <laughs> but no, but saying that, like, what I'm saying is, yeah, you you can expect and tell me that those things are what you want, but you're not going to see. Here's the thing. It's not what you say; it's how you say it. Yep. Like you can like. Oh, so I expect you to have the house clean, and I expect you to. No, those like that to me. That sounds like slavery. Like, See, I don't thing. have a problem with like, that. Like, don't don't yeah. tell. Like, don't. Here's my thing. I can tell you. Okay, yes, I would like for you to protect me, but I don't expect you to take a freaking bullet for me. Like, I'm not gonna be like you're not a man enough if you don't. <laughs> you know, I mean, I would hope that you would want to you know <laughs> jump in front of something for me because you're, you're, that's your that's your instinct for me there are certain things that are instinct that you know you were instinct like it's in it's in you it's innate in you right mm -hmm. but if you tell me like and mind you once again i i can be extreme i can be very submissive but what you're not gonna do <laughs> is order me around like yeah like i'm a thing you know, that's what you're yeah. not going to do because I love but all those things that you said, I'm going to do them on my own. Yeah. If if I if I love you, if I respect you, yeah. if you it's have true. earned, if you have earned all that, you will get that and more. Yeah. You don't have to tell me right. to do something. Yeah. That's right. But how do you move? How do you carry yourself? Are you doing the things that are expected of a man? 
That's all right. you gotta do is earn it. Right? And see, for me, I'm gonna give it to you. I'm like, the, I, I, like I get it, but I'm kind of different mm -hmm. a little because I feel like there are certain things, like we talk about expectations or our innate abilities to do things. Like I'm a woman, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm supposed to create, to multiply, to nurture. Like that's what I'm here for, and for a man, like. He has his things that he's responsible for. So even for me in a relationship, I don't really care. I'm, I'm not going to say I don't care. Let me scratch that. I don't want to rock with that. What you do is not going to affect what I'm doing. Like, I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do as a woman regardless. So mm -hmm. if, if, especially in the beginning, we already established those expectations. I know if, I'm, if we have a home together, certain things I'm responsible for in the home. Mm -hmm. If you can cook. That's on my list because I never I been with a man, man that could cook. cook. Like that's new for me. That's, that's, I've, I've that's, been, that's a new expectation. That is very of mine. sexy. I've had women so, angry at me because I do all the cooking because well, see, they, because they feel that that's a control thing. Like that, what? that you. But see, you'd that's all mindset. You'd be surprised. Some people. That's all mindset. Yes. Yeah, and that's what mindset. I'm saying. Like for me, I don't really. I'm not going to say, "Well, you didn't do X, Y, and Z today." So I'm not cooking you dinner. Like, you're going right. to eat dinner regardless. For me, it is not about counting, but it's like for, for me. And I know people that follow me on social media and, and know me in a different capacity just think I'm, I am woman, hear me roar. And yes, I'm all of those things. Don't test me because you will find out. <laughs> but in a relationship, yeah. it is very yeah. important to me to have a certain type of man because I am very much a woman and I want to feel like a woman uh -huh. when I am right. with my man. Same. Do do I want to be submissive in the sense of letting my man be the leader because I trust his decision making? Of course. Yes. Of course. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean I don't have a voice. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean I don't mm -hmm. have a say. It doesn't mean I don't have input and and it doesn't mean that I don't have leadership responsibilities Ability. yeah. and, and abilities. Mm -hmm. But at the end right. of the day, when my man does what what is necessary to make me feel loved, to make me feel protected, to make me feel respected. He doesn't have to ask me for a damn thing. That makes it easy. He's yeah. going to get it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm a cook. Thank I'm you. I'm a clean. I'm going to do all of those things because I want <laughs> to do those things for him. Yeah. Not because I am sitting back counting on exactly. a daily basis of you did this, you didn't do that. But no, just overall, generally, are, are you giving me what I need as a woman so I can give you what you need as a man. Mm -hmm. But the moment that I don't feel protected, the moment that, that I don't feel respected and I feel like Ooh, I have girl. to protect myself, a conversation. Then, then, yeah. then I do mm -hmm. go into masculine mode. And guess what? Yes. Masculine mode is self-protection mode. Mm -hmm. I'm not cooking. Yep. I'm not cleaning. <laughs> I'm not doing none of that shit because I'm looking out for me mm -hmm. because you have made right. me feel unsafe. Nice. Yes. Yeah. It's true. I get it. I true. get it. Now the whole respect thing, like and me not feeling protected. I'm gonna have a conversation with you. I'm not oh, gonna yeah, stop I don't think I definitely am not going to shut down. Like mm -hmm. I'm not gonna stop cooking and cleaning, doing all those things. Mm -hmm. Like but I'm definitely going because I have strong energy as well. It's but a conversation. At home, I prefer not to be. I per, I prefer to just kind of you know what I'm saying? Especially, mm -hmm. I mean, you're not, we're not going to have a home together if I don't feel comfortable. Exactly. That's number one. Exactly. So, and, the, and if something happens where I become uncomfortable, then there's some, some kind of disconnect and some kind of conversation. I understand you're a human every single mm -hmm. day. You're not going to be, I'm a man, hear me raw. Like, so I have to also be able to accommodate that. Yeah. So I, I that's what I'm saying. I get it. But at the same time, I think I'm a little bit more flexible mm -hmm. as far as my responsibilities are at home. Well, I guess I'm, I'm not like it's not as cut and dry as that. Like, of, of course, once again, I'm a fan of processes and I'm a communicator. So it's not okay. going to be I don't feel safe. You I'm just shutting everything up. Right. Like it's, it's going to be, baby, what is going on? Right. Let's talk about this. I have a feeling about this. We can go to therapy. We can sure. whatever. But if after a certain amount of time, oh, yeah, yeah. You, you haven't rectified this situation and I've communicated, mm -hmm. then nah, like I'm, I'm going into self-protection mode. I get it, yeah. Because at the end of the day, like I was raised to protect myself. I get that. You know? Um, so let's talk about <laughs> has there ever, and, and we are really supposed to be leaving in a little bit, but right. I have to get some of these questions in because the conversation has just been so organic and so dynamic that I haven't gotten in some questions that I really want to get in. 
let's talk about settling because we've we've talked about you know standards mm -hmm. or whatever. Has there ever been a time <laughs> that you felt like you settled to be with the person, and how did that work out for you? It didn't. <laughs> Kiki's I, like it didn't. I think that I didn't know I was settling. Okay. I think that, like I said, now I'm more aware of myself. I think um, in those times, I wasn't. So I didn't really know what to look for. Mm -hmm. But once I was in it, then I was like, bro, what have I done? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So I, I definitely have kind of what a lot of strong women do is kind of like turn it down a notch to, yep. you know, ugh. I'm trying to be, I want to be mindful of what I'm saying, but <laughs> I'm kind of turning down a notch to be mindful of your partner. Yes. And um, I know now I prefer a more confident man, yes. a man that's more secure. He's experienced, he's informed, he's a forward thinker. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm looking for now <clears throat> because I'm more aware. At that time, I wasn't aware that I needed that. Right. Yeah. Have you ever sell settled, fellas? Because I think men settle too. Not me. I don't, got, I don't got time for it. I don't, got, I, don't, I don't have the time or the attention span for You've that. never settled in your entire life? No. You never was yeah. like, why did I do this? No. Never. Oh, no. I mean, there's, oh, there's definitely been some regrets, but that's been more on some like, man, I should have never slept with that person. Oh, okay. Like a or, creature or, of the or, moment. Or, 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 or it's been like, I should have only slept with that person. Now, I have, there have been oh, some situations. Okay. Mm. Oh, there, there have been some that situations. might be the one. There have, there have been some situations where I've been in relationships, the, the women that I uh, have had relationships with, mm -hmm. there might have been one or two of them that really should have just been a jump off. Yeah. And like, just kept it moving. And, 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 and again, I saw the signs. And you ignored I them. I saw the red flags. <laughs> But I, but, but, so that's but also, but yeah. no, no, no. Exactly. That's settling. It's definitely that's that's settling. settling. You, you know, he doesn't like the box. No, 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 no. I wouldn't say. <laughs> he no, likes no. to get creative. No, yeah, I wouldn't say. He's a creative. No, yeah. I wouldn't say. I wouldn't <laughs> He's flashing just like that. I wouldn't turf. say settling. <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't call it. I wouldn't call it settling. Mm -hmm. What I would call it is me trying to do what you guys are trying to convince me that people are supposed to do. What? Where normally, I don't do that. I'm but you saying, committed. So no, that's right that's here, no. If a, no, normally, if a woman, normally, if a woman show, if I see something, I remember, okay, Baltimore. No, I go back to the no. I remember, I remember, I remember, I remember I was story. dating this girl. I remember, I remember I started dating this girl, and she took me to the movie theater over there that's uh, it, by the water in, in, in uh, Baltimore somewhere. I guess it's like uh -oh. right below... Uh, East, uh, right below Little Italy. In that, yeah, that Harvard, Baltimore, right? Baltimore, Baltimore okay. Comedy Factory is where we are. And right I remember, and this girl, lot. this girl lived in Baltimore. Okay, invited me to go with her out to this particular place, but she had no clue how to get to wherever where we was going. And I said to her, I said, "I'm just giving you the heads up. The type of person that I am, I don't, I'm not comfortable, and I don't. It's kind of like how you say once you once you get that sign of like." discomfort or or don't feel safe so even for me as a man i i had to say to her like yo you just you just riding around you you invited me to somewhere you're not sure where it is we're not you, I, i'm not even from baltimore and i know baltimore better than you but i'm just letting you know i get lost that's that's something like that <laughs> i'm just but i'm but i'm letting you know he couldn't that, go out with me that's something like I'm that always lost <laughs> always no, I, I, I don't mind us being lost together but i just don't but we can't both be completely not in Baltimore. Lost. Like we just can't. It just it, to me. To me, that shows that to me that that shows more. It's it, that that all of that deep stuff y'all talking about. I think those moments reveal how serious a person takes things. Like if a person really does have standards, if a person really does think about the other party. Uh, so you feel like you settled with her because she didn't know where she was going? No, it wasn't that. I just don't think that she was considerate of my time, considerate of me coming to up there. Okay, I see what you're saying. She didn't have the yeah, impression she that there was plan. a plan, that I was invited. Did she have I'm GPS? Simply, like, what was the problem? Man, I mean, what, I mean, we literally were like right by the place. And that's what that's the other part of it that I was that kind of disturbed me, disturbed me. So I was just kind of like, all right, well, you know what? This ain't gonna happen. All right. right. So that's all. Have I, I, you ever sexually settled then? Because a lot of times <laughs> I, I find, even though people are people, okay, but you do have some general trends sometimes. And mm. 
where men may not settle in a relationship, men settle sexually all the time. I've heard so many men say, I wasn't even attracted to her, but I just hit it. Have you ever sexually settled? No. So no. sexually settled meaning no, like you. not physically attracted to right, or like but the sex was you just d like no, like you were not attracted to the person oh, but no. you had sex with them. Nah. Nah. I can't relate to nah. that. Nah. I may have settled where I wasn't satisfied completely sexually. Yeah. But I've never been intimate with someone that I, I wasn't right. feeling. Yeah. Okay, so there's standards <laughs> and then there's chemistry. But it's chemistry yeah. sexual. Which one? No, no. Okay. <laughs> Which one weighs more heavily for you? Because you can, chemistry. like, chemistry. like Wes said earlier, you can have that person that meets all your standards, but she got the little chocolate nerds in her thong. <laughs> <Right. laughs> what have you, right? So which weighs more heavily for, for each of you as individuals? Standards, chemistry, or do they weigh equally? It's chemistry for me. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I am one of those electromagnetic dudes. I'm, a, I'm yeah. creepy like that, where I, was, I will be like this and literally, tr literally use my, my power of... Uh, persuasion, perception, the power <laughs> of uh, manifestation. Like, mm -hmm. I believe in all of that stuff. Oh, you no. should. It's so, real. So, so, it's so, very so, real. There, 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 there's not a woman that, I, I'm not going to say there's not a woman, but <laughs> most of the women. Tell that us how you really mo feel. Most that. of the women that I've ended he up. He manifested. That I've ended up with, <laughs> or that I've ended up being intimate with, or had relationships with. I did manifest that. Right. Same. And whether I it agree. was a year ago, it's 20 years, year. 10 years ago, uh, uh, and. I may not have like pursued them throughout that time, mm -hmm. but I at some point probably looked at them, made up your and mind, and I made that decision. Mm -hmm. and I said, her. I said, oh, you know what? She and I are gonna we we we, we gonna we, we gonna tangle, cool. we I gonna tango a little bit. <laughs> okay, you know? all and, right. And so so I don't I I, I definitely ain't, I don't know about that settling thing. I think it's I the know. same. I think chemistry is. But chemistry is, is it'll kind of have me walk away like uh, look at my stain. It's like ah. Uh, I don't know. We got this vibe, like uh -huh. you know what I mean. Now, if 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 the character is off, then I'm then that's just, a problem. You know what I mean. I think that chemistry will definitely get my attention, mm -hmm. but I don't. I can't say it will necessarily keep me. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Kiki and Andre. For me, it's definitely chemistry as well. I don't care how fine you are, how much money you have, how much power, how much popular you are if i don't click yep i don't click yeah <laughs> you can't make it happen yeah that's true i mean for me at this point if we don't have chemistry you don't even get to get to my standards exactly <laughs> nice there you go hey so now i have a question brother as a married man how does Absolutely. that work how do you play how does that how does that play out and are, are there do when you're in a marriage do standards or do expectations of your partner do those fluctuate as if the same way people who might be just dating i don't know if that's a, a if that, that makes sense yeah I, mm -hmm. I'm just that makes curious. sense that's no, a good question that's no, a good question to be honest with you i think it changes over time um it's kind of like kiki in the list right because you figure me 15 years ago what i thought i needed is completely different From than now. what i need yeah. now right mm -hmm. so like i said 15 years ago i was more dependent upon outside validation mm -hmm. right so now I'm a lot more comfortable within myself. And even if we talk about society and what society says should be expected of a man, it took me getting married and understanding what was most important to me to understand what my true value was, right? So yes. I know what I bring to the table is well outside of the financial security that I might contribute to or the way that I am in any other capacity where society judges me by. Mm -hmm. But the person I am at my core, being able to show up that way in every yes. environment that I'm in, mm -hmm. that's that's the difference now. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yes, yeah. without question, you should be able to shift and move. And if this person loves you and you can be honest and say, mm -hmm. you know what, I'm messing up. Mm -hmm. Right. Because mm -hmm. I know the hardest thing for me to do is to take that constructive criticism from my wife because I care about what she says and thinks more than anybody else. Yes. Yeah. Right. So I immediately get more defensive. That's why a stranger can say something to me. And I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. My wife says it. I immediately, that history, you know, 
But to your point, I think that if you're with somebody who you can humble yourself in that space, mm, you word. will always be willing to make that move and you'll always be willing to say, you know what, I hear what you're saying. I don't necessarily very self-aware and I'm hyper analytical, so I get paralyzed by it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's where you can get into that cycle. But yeah. you get with somebody who you trust and you know she has your best interest at heart. Yeah. yeah. And you start to accept that, all yep. of a sudden the relationship just explodes in areas that you it never does. imagined. Man. Humility I'm and an communication are key. That's like what those, I was going to say. Those are the two things, humility and communication. And that, and, and that yes. humility is what is missing a lot of times when it comes to like us connecting mm-hmm. as humans. Everybody has yeah. their ideas. Their Everybody's got an ego. Yeah. Everybody's got an that's, ego. That's, that's but in a relationship, you got to put that to the side. That thing, man. Yep. Yeah. And I'm Absolutely. getting the wrap-up sign. My crew is ready to go home. <laughs> so I'm going to ask one final question because I've got to get this in. And it's a fun one. Okay. Who is the one person that will make you just risk it all and be like, standards be damned, like, I've got to have this person? Hmm. And this is for fun. I'm going to, honestly, I don't have that one person. Yeah. I can't oh, think uh-huh. of one human being that would make me drop everything and run after. I don't have one. Okay. I, I've actually asked myself that question before. Okay. Nope, there's not one. I'm with her. I don't really. Y'all are so not fun right now. I'm though. sorry. Uh, my, my, <laughs> so mine's, is, mine's is April Watts. Shut your ass up! You're so full of me, y'all. Like you are so full. This is this what I don't like about people. You ain't gonna be honest. Uh, yeah, that's what I don't get. Like I don't get it. I don't, I don't get it. Yo, I don't get it. People say they want the truth. You give them a truth, and, and they can't handle it. All right, all right, all right. Hey, hey, Wes, I got you. Wes, <laughs> I agree with you in the space that the thing that you see, the way she shows up, makes you literally say from the beginning, you know what? I think I can compromise a couple of things about this stuff. <laughs> right? That's but that's honest. Yep. Y'all so crazy. Right? They I being mean, honest. Again, but that's chemistry, like right? But like Wes said, right? But that's that chemistry. So there's obviously an energy that's there. He says, you know what? I might discover that she might have those chocolate nerds, and I might be like, baby, let me wait and pick that out for you. Right. Let me, let me chocolate nerds in the bed. Let, 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 let me take care of that for you. Throw, throw them in there with my workout shorts and just. <laughs> I'll take care of it. Don't worry about it. I'll just lock it. I'll do the laundry. I'll do the laundry today, baby. I love you that much. That I'll is that. hilarious. Well, I love all of you guys. You have been a phenomenal panel. I'm letting you know each one of you were amazing, and I would love to have you back at some point. Maybe not all together, but at different <laughs> times. Oh, and hopefully tonight's topic gave you some insight into your situation and whatever it is you are dealing with and going through. We wish you the best in life and love. We'll see you next Tuesday at 8 p.m. right here on YouTube and Facebook. Thank you so much. Ego, baby.